Americans nationwide have felt the impact of this year's extreme weather from flooding to wildfires to record heat. In Washington state, heat domes in June and August of this year have caused hundreds to die of heat exposure. With yet more intense heat in the U.S. this week, forest fires in many western states can be seen from space. Air quality in almost every part of California is very unhealthy. Overnight, another wave of destruction. The Oak Fire more than doubling in size to 14,000 acres. Hurricanes and floods and wildfires, all of them made worse by climate change. The skyline of San Francisco looking more like an image from Mars. Level three, get out. Wow. Get out. And uh, yeah, grab some papers. Grab some papers. Stuff. And, uh, food. This is it. This is what I The United States averages 64,000 wildfires a year, and in the year 2022, nearly 8 million acres burned because of wildfires, displacing hundreds of thousands of families. And I live in one of the most fire-prone areas of the country. Shifting winds cast embers from the Silverado fire up and over Alton Parkway in Lake Forest. The Silverado fire was very close to me. Although I personally did not have to evacuate, several of my friends did, and one of them even stayed with me during their evacuation. However, because I wanted to get a clearer picture on how wildfires impact people, I got the opportunity to interview two survivors of the Marshall Fire in Colorado. This fire broke out south of Boulder just after 11 this morning. Since then, nearly 600 homes have been burned making it Colorado's most destructive wildfire in just a matter of hours. Because about a thousand houses were burned and three cities were evacuated. Their house burned down and the Marshall Fire completely burned down. Uh, nothing left at all. Rebuilding a home is expensive. That's why many homeowners, especially ones in fire prone areas, depend on fire insurance. But recently that's become harder to do. It's just like a lottery, they're just picking people and then canceling them and come to find out that the price per square foot we were insured at like you know somewhere between a third or half of what um it would take to replace the house right so not good and it was so bad that uh, i distinctly remember that superior city actually had created a special line to help people with their insurance claims now, less than 3% of Californians are fully covered by fire insurance, and almost no one is covered in fire-prone areas of the country. When people's houses burn down, they end up footing the bill. While this is tragic, it's important to remember that progress is being made. Ricardo Lara is proposing new rules to improve wildfire safety, and they say that the regulations will also lower the cost of insurance for homeowners and businesses under the proposed guidance. A bill is making its way through the state capitol that would mandate insurance companies write or renew policies for existing homes that meet statewide standards for fire hardening. If I was elected to Congress, I would use these ideas to create national legislation that would help lower the cost of fire insurance and increase the transparency. Ending the things that cause these issues, like climate change, is crucial. But we also need to help the people who are affected right now. In my legislation, I would collect all the different data about insurance companies and about their policies, their rates, and other important information to consumers. Then I would compile all this information and report it in a central place. This would help consumers know what they're paying for and what the different policies of their insurance companies are so that their insurance does not get canceled. Additionally, in extremely fire-prone areas, I would use federal funding to help subsidize some of the costs to fire insurance companies so that they could still provide insurance to people in these really fire-prone areas. Lastly, this would help uh, decrease costs by increasing competitiveness, as more people would know about the prices which would incentivize companies to lower their rates. Having people understand what those are, that is the key part to success, right? And having a venue to for the people to go and uh, go and get the information. They need to understand what's going on, what are their rights. Right? Historically, fire insurance companies have been against these types of measures in the past. And many fire insurance companies have had a lot of losses with increases in wildfires. 
I've never encountered a situation where uh, the addition of the federal government into the process reduces regulation or increases efficiency. Claims payments from two consecutive years of devastating wildfires have left California homeowners insurers with an underwriting loss of over $10 billion. However, programs offering limited subsidies, like the ones in the National Flood Insurance Program, have been supported by the insurance industry. It is our opinion that the NFIP is in serious need of reform and in order to achieve this goal. NAMIC believes that the best option is optimizing the current framework by implementing significant reforms that address the existing weaknesses. Ultimately, if the people, the government, and fire insurance all work together, like in my solution, we could help the people who are suffering from this issue. After all, people dealing with fire have enough to worry about. Fire insurance shouldn't be one.